Turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis 22. They already started to clock on me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to it. Now, I'm gonna open my laptop slowly. I'm not gonna show the symbol the whole service because I know that upset some of the folk from Cleveland. But I'm gonna just open it slowly so some of y'all can get a little bit before we put it all the way down. Hallelujah. This is the kryptonite against Cleveland. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to go to uh, Genesis chapter 22. Amen. I'm almost 50 now. So it's time to put the glasses on. Thank you, Elder Maria, for your kind words. There are some folk that you would just make sure that you can go and see about them. And one of those people also is my brother, Mark Shepard. We got to go break bread a couple weeks ago and had a good time. I almost put a cramp in his side, making him laugh. <laughs> but it's good for us to fellowship together as a family outside the four walls. Amen? Amen. 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 Do you have Genesis 22? Amen. Amen. We're going to be reading from this familiar passage now. I, I, I do follow those different translations at different times. But then sometimes I just got to go back to the old King James kind of thing. Every now and again, I got to hear some these and they and unto thou's and things to just make me feel churchy. So Genesis 22, beginning at verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I, here I am, son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son... God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound his, his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld from not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. I want to share with you giving your all in worship. Father, bless this word. I am confident that this is your word because the adversary tried every trick that he could to stop, delay, distract, destroy this word. But you are God and God alone. You have no equal. You have no rival. You are God. Speak and breathe on this word today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. I, I, I would ask, please keep your Bibles open to Genesis 22 because it's going to be important for what we are trying to pursue today. This is a familiar passage. Now, if, you, if you're like me and you grew up, matter of fact, I went to church before I was born. 
I was inside my mother and in church. I was in my mother singing in the choir and directing. When I got out of my mother, I came back to the church. I've been in church. I've been to Sunday school. I know some of y'all don't know what that is, but I've been to Sunday school. I've, I've been uh, a part of the Sunshine Band. I've been to YPWW. I've been to summer camp. I've been every kind of, every time the doors of the church open, I seem to have been there. So I, I'm, I'm familiar with this passage because I've heard it time and time again. But as God was leading me this way, I prayed, God, please reveal a new revelation. Please reveal something to me that I hadn't seen before. Reveal to me something that I've taken for granted. But if you'll be patient with the Holy Spirit in me, we believe that we can reveal another truth to us in this journey on kingdom living. Abraham is one of my favorite characters in scripture because he represents one of the earliest illustrations of God's grace and redeeming love. In Genesis 15 and verse 6, it is recorded that Abram believed the Lord and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Genesis 15 to 6, Abraham believed the Lord and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Before the law, righteousness. Before the cross, grace. Abraham believed Jehovah. He believed the existing one. He believed in the, pro this is, Jehovah was the proper name of the true and living God. Abraham, now, <laughs> Abram, just like a lot of us, came to believe God, but there were still a few things that had to be worked out in us. I know some of y'all came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way, but there were some of us. That after we met God, we still there's still some things that he had to get out of us. There, there, there still were a few things that he had to work out in us. There, there was a few things that God had to continue to do in us. How do I know this? Because his story begins in chapter 12. Now, the Lord said unto Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great. I, you shall be a blessing and I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you and your families will bless all the inhabitants of the earth. So Abraham departed as God has spoken to him and Lot went with him. Now, now I know some of you all are Bible scholars. And some of you are great uh, 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 studiers of uh, linguistics. But I believe the first thing that God told Abram was to get out of his country and away from your family. Those are pretty simple instructions. There was nothing ambiguous about it. Now, listen, I don't know about y'all, but there have been some times that I've asked God, what shall I do? Speak to me, Lord. Give it. Give me a word. Let me understand. And 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 I heard go. Well, what did that mean, God? Just, can you break down? Can, but no, God was pretty specific. Get out of this country. Get away from your kinfolk. And 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 get away from your daddy's house. I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna take you. He did the first part. Uh, maybe God didn't mean the second part. Why? Because in verse 4, Abraham departed as the Lord had commanded him. And Lot went with him. <laughs> Did, does your Bible spoke? Does, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. This, this, this is what I don't understand. Some of us look for God to do great things and be pour out a blessing and anoint us and use us, and, but we don't completely. Listen, listen, I, now, now, I claim to be a person that can cook. I claim it. But there's some things that Lady Tony can do and my dear can do that they won't let me do. You see, Lady Tazzle can grab some collard greens and make them spin around and do some different things. 
that after the anointing comes, it hits your tongue. Eh, sha. And it just dissolved. I've been asking for years. What'd you put in there? How much of that did you? Because, see, I'm a recipe follower. And the last time I checked, and I told my grandmother the same thing. How much, how do you measure a pinch? I need you to quantify a little long. <laughs> Grandma, my hand's bigger than yours, so if you tell me a handful of flour, it's going to be bigger than your handful of flour. There are some things that folks just won't let you do, but, but there's a recipe. There's a formula. And if you follow the formula, if you follow the recipe, you'll get the outcome that you intend to do. That's why my cakes is better than hers. I mean, than some other people's. Because I follow the recipe. The recipe was available to me. The, the recipe was made there to me. And because of experience, I learned how to follow. Now, I wonder if we've gotten a recipe for kingdom living. I wonder if we've gotten a recipe to deal with the circumstances and the situations that arise. And I wonder if we've gotten a recipe that just might get us out of some situations. I wonder if a recipe was given. I wonder if there's a formula. I wonder if there's a formula that just might be able to rectify some situations that, that seems to come up time and time again. There is a formula. And, and, and right from the outset, Abram decided, oh, I'm going to modify it. Now, now, when folks get to modifying the formula, uh -huh. that's when you start seeing weird things in the collard greens. Yeah. <laughs> that's when you start seeing peculiar things in the lettuce. Yeah. Now, there, there, there have been times that I've gone to corporate events. Elder Mario understands you. Sometimes you go to corporate events and you, you have to, uh, good afternoon, how are you? You, you, you got you to gotta do the role. And, and they'll, they'll have a potluck and they'll bring, and, and I remember one time, Elder Mario, when I was working for Delta Airlines, uh, I was working in the office, and God always blesses me to have somebody in my proximity that's got a mother spirit. So we're going, and I'm, I've been working with these guys for a like, <laughs> that's good, man. <laughs> I know how to play the game now, you know, so, so I'm going through and then they say, well, listen, guys, we're going to take a break. We're going to go to the conference room and we're going to have lunch together. Let's come on in. Everybody come on in. Yeah. All right. Hey, I'm all for a break. I come in and I go walking around. I grab my paper plate. And then there's this, this young black woman who's an administrator who grabbed my shirt tail and walked close to me. And I got, now I got my plate in my hand. Yeah. And I'm ready to, I'm going to get me a list. She said, don't eat that. <laughs> but all these people cooked all it. Don't eat that. <laughs> Sometimes you got to listen to folks' wisdom. Somebody might come to you that don't, don't look like they, they much of nothing. And you, you would ask, what they, don't go there. Wisdom will tell you, they'll, they'll, the mother of the church will say to you, don't, don't go by that person's house. Yes. Somebody will call you, they say, listen, I, I know uh, you were thinking about going to hang out with so-and-so, it's too late. Yes. Sometimes you need to listen to the wisdom of the folk that's, that's trying to protect you. Yes. And too many times we think we're smarter than everybody else. Yes. Now, now, before we go any further, let me help you to understand Abram was no stranger to worship. In fact, just about every time that God spoke to Abram, he built an altar. When, when, when Abram was halfway listening to God and he passed through Canaan, God tells him, this will be the land of those descendants that I promised to you. Bam! He built an altar. Woo! Anybody ever been encouraged in the Lord? You come to church and the, the man or woman of God gives you an encouragement and, and you get a praise on. They say, you shall live and not die. Yes! 
So y'all, we know how to church now. Come on. And, and, and so Abram heard God. He was confirmed in the word and he built an altar. Abraham worshiped. He traveled just a little bit further to make a permanent encampment and built an altar to worship God in the land that God had told him to stay in. Now, he came in to this land and then suddenly a famine arose. Now, because times is tough, now because things are happening, he decides, I got to go down into Egypt. But then something happened. When he decided to follow his own plan, there was a fearful, deceitful spirit that rose up in him. What are you talking about, preacher? Go to your word. It says that he went down and because he feared Pharaoh, that he would look upon his wife and see that she was beautiful, he will kill me and take you for himself. So we gonna tell him, you my sister. There are some situations that we go through that it will reveal to us what's in us. Now listen, I'm, 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 I'm not, I, I, I told y'all, I, I, I'm not those that came from heaven to earth. I, I've been through some things. Now, a long time ago, long, long, long time ago, I could hear whether or not my mother or father were upset with me. Now, I, I, I'll tell this story again. We used to have what is called the Hills Department Store. You know, see, he from up north. Hills Department Store was akin to uh, uh, Woolworths at Kmart. But that was an up north local brand. And whenever my mother would say, I'm going to Hills, I didn't care what she was getting. I was going. Why? Because I knew if she didn't buy me anything, she was going to get me a pretzel and a slushie. I pushed that buggy all day because I know I'm going to get my pretzel and my slushie. So. As we're going through, and I was that child that would hide under stuff, and while mama's pushing, I would, I'd have my own little world, my own little adventure. But as we're walking and we're going through, there begin to be a call deep in my spirit from the toy section. Just called to me. And I did like Abram, here I am. <laughs> and I found myself wandering to the toy section. And there was a beautiful red Hot Wheels that I just knew my father would want me to have. He wasn't with us, but I knew he would want James Jr. to have this Hot Wheels. So I went to my mother, mama. I believe daddy would want me to have this. Well, your daddy didn't give you no money for it, so put it back. That is not the will of my father. Before I got saved, y'all, I walked it back just mad. Now, no, don't, don't y'all children do this because don't do it. I'm just mad. Throw the Hot Wheels. Something happened. It opened. See, my father wants me to have this. This is the 70s, y'all. It's a different time. So, I believed it was mine. So, I put it in my pocket. Came on around. Still playing under stuff. Because I, listen, at the end, I still want my pretzel and my slushie. So mama's checking out. She's going through and everything. And as we're walking out, this strange man walked up in front of her. He said, excuse me, ma'am. Can I speak to you? Said, what do you want to talk? We need to see what's in your son's pocket.
Now, I am confronted with the circumstance by which I am going to be having to make an account for what I thought was my father's will. What do you have in your pocket? None. We're, we're going to have to ask you again. Son, open your pockets. See? It's one more pocket, son. What are you talking about? Then my mother leaned down with that smile. If you don't open your pockets to these folks right now, I swear to Jesus, I'm going to put you up under this building. I take it out. Show it to them. Ma'am, can you all come to the office? So we're going to have to write this up because your son stole. I didn't steal it. Lion. You just took it out your pocket. But I'm scared. So I'm lying, thinking I can protect myself. Not knowing I'm digging the hole deeper. Didn't nobody, I didn't do that. No. Then where did you get it? My Uncle Wayne bought it. I'm. Then where's Wayne? He left. Oh, listen, y'all, I'm, I'm digging it whole, I'm digging it deeper. I'm digging it deeper. And I kept making up excuses. I kept making up lies. And then they said, ma'am, we're not going to make this a major offense because it's simply a Hot Wheels. But I'm going to show you the video. <laughs> Just kill me now, man. Because <laughs> now you're telling me there is a video. The truth was going to come out. Now, I know y'all don't do this kind of thing today. But after they had shown my mother the evidence and showed her everything, she said, ma'am, if you'll just sign this paper and go on, wherever. She signed it. We're walking out. We're going out. And she's, she's fuming. But she's, she's, woo, she, she could have broke that buggy. Can I have my pretzel and slushy? Why? Because you feel entitled. Because you're named after your father. You think you can get have whatever you want. Boy, when you get in this car, the level of whooping I'm going to give you. My mom a little bit. I was terrified. She whooped me in the back seat. What kind of car? I don't remember what kind. Of, but in the back seat, just. She got all angles. Once she got tired and I'm in the back seat writhing in pain. She we didn't have to put the seatbelt on. Well, no child seat. Whatever. She threw the stuff. Whatever she bought, she threw it on top of me. I just kept on going. <laughs> Got in the car. We going home. And as we're pulling up to the light, I still remember the echo of her words. I'm going to tell your daddy when you get home. Let me out now. <laughs> I don't have to live with y'all no more. I ain't got to go. Just pull over. <laughs> I'll, I'll survive. Some things have got to be worked out of you. Some things have got to be worked out of you. Because in my childhood, I would lie to protect myself. But when I became a grown man, if they did something and they were doing the, uh, an evaluation on the job, well, James, you didn't do this, you did that. I said, you are correct. And I will do more to improve. Like, you're not going to make excuses? No. Because that got worked out of me. As a child, y'all stay with me. Stay with me. Okay, sell somebody near you. He's working some stuff out of me. 
Now, God brings him out of Egypt, but allows some growth pains to separate him from Lot because still Lot is with him. And now that he's bringing him back out of Egypt and bringing him out of a circumstance that he put him else himself into, God he, uh, causes uh, some strife. And, and it's interesting. Uh, Lady Tony used that word this week. And, 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 and when I read it again, I think on, on Wednesday or something, I, I, it leaped off the page at me. God allowed strife between the two camps so that he could cause a separation because Abram is not going to do something until I make him uncomfortable. He's, he's, he's shown time and time again, unless I make him uncomfortable, he's going to hold on to it. Any, any women in here ever had a baby? And, and you, you, you will just keep it in there, but suddenly a pain will come. Whatever's in here is about to come out. And, 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 if, and if you don't move at the speed with which it th believes it needs to happen, the pain will intensify. And, and, and this was such a case that God reminded him of his promises after he separated them. God said, I will make your family like the dust of the earth. I will make you like the stars in the sky. They will not be able to count you. And what did Abram do? He worshiped. He built another altar. Now, now, it is at this point of his life that Abram is not satisfied simply with burnt offerings. He started to realize that God is blessing me. He's blessing whatever I put my hands to do. See, some of us need to understand that along our journey of living with God, our worship needs to mature. Come on. Our worship needs to mature. It shouldn't be the same as when we, when we, when we, when we first came. To, matter of fact, maybe it does need to be. Because when you first got saved, couldn't nobody out-worship you. God, that God. Oh, you was there. Y'all know nothing about testimony service. We used to have testimony service. I used to stand on this side of the table. Somebody stand on that side. And we'd take turns moving the mic back and forth, leading the song. Because first giving honor to God, who was the head of my life, who was the, the saints, gods, and friends. Bless the pastor, the first lady. I want to thank God for. We, we need to get to a point where we're willing to mature in our worship. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Are you following the formula that God gave for worship? Are you following the formula that God gave for worship? I know you're talking about what are you talking about. I'm, I'm going to show you what God's formula is for worship. And then even in your worship, are you maturing in your worship? Can, can you worship God for more than five minutes? Can you worship God for more than just your favorite song on the radio? Can you worship God to a point where you got to pull over and said, God has been too good to me. Can you, can you get to a point in worship where you're at your desk and you listen to something and you said, listen, if I don't get up from here right now, somebody going to call me and wonder what's going on. I've got to have a mature worship, not in just the church, not just in the home, but every place that I go, I should have a worship on my tongue. Now, in chapter 14, he made up in his mind, I cannot let my family be destroyed. And he goes and he fights for Lot. I believe God is like, didn't I tell you? But thank God for his patience. His grace, his mercy that is new every morning. Because he told you at the outset, at the beginning of us being introduced to you, Abram, he said, get away from your country and your kinfolk. Because your kinfolk in this circumstance, God says, I see the problems that your kinfolk are going to cause you. And in chapter 14, he decides to get his men who are trained and ready and go fight for Lot. Some of us have made up in our minds, we will not let the devil have our children. We will not let the devil have our family, we not our friends, not our neighbors, not to drugs, not to the streets, not to sickness, not to mental disease. Abram had a determination within him that he is going to fight for his family. But then Abram said a one true God. He said to his one true and living God who gave him the victory, God has been so good to me. 
I'm thinking God has been so good to me. And I, I've been, every time he speaks to me, I give him an altar and I worship. But I, I just had the victory over some kings and armies. I got to do, God's been too good to me. And that's when he instituted, instituted the tithe. Because coming back from de defeating his enemies, and Bishop taught on this just last week, he came and he came and he met the king of Salem, Melchizedek. And he said, they, they began to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. And he said, I will give a tithe to you as the high priest, as the representative of God, because he's been too good to me, because he's been so gracious to me. In fact, I'll read to you. Um, he said, blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the God of most high who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And, and, and so he said, he has been good. I got to give a portion of what I have to God. Now, now, now see, my first point, have you committed to give God his portion? Have you committed to giving God his portion? Now, immediately, all of us tighten up. Because you think I'm talking about money. I'm not just talking about money. Have you committed to giving God his portion for prayer? Mmm. Got quiet. Listen, I'm just like you. I, 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 I used to tease Bishop all the time until he caught me on one of them. I said, listen, Bishop, do God not meet us at 5 p.m.? Why y'all keep calling these early morning? Y'all be and I, I was making excuses like, Bishop, after I work all day and I get just getting up at five. And he said, no, I can't tell y'all exactly what he said because that was a word for me. And after that, if they say we're praying at five, I'm getting myself up at five. Because this is what I know. God has been too good to me. When I look in the mirror and I still see scars from a motorcycle accident and I'm here. He's been too good to me. And I remember going, when I'm going up 75 and I'm driving uh, up, the, up the road, and I remember where the van flipped over four times, and I walked away from it. He's been too good to me. God has been too good to us in so many different ways. When he tried to take the life of family. And I earnestly grabbed the horns of the altar to intercede. And, and he stopped death right there and said, no further. God has been too good to us. Now, you can, do your own, you can do your own evaluation. He's been good to you. And then he's been good to you. Because he's been so good. And then as I think about his goodness, listen, and if you can't do anything else, remember this. The only reason you're breathing is because he's good. The first point, have you committed your portion to God? Now, we've come to a point, uh, using today's vernacular, where now Abram gets saved. And we're here at verse 15, uh, uh, chapter 15, excuse me, verse 6. God accounted to him as righteousness. Abram asked God, as after his testimony, this is one of those interesting passages where we, we, we as preachers, will say that that catchphrase and in there but there's something after verse 6 because Abram said how will I know how will I know and then God said I'm going to show you verse uh, our second point God's presence is God's presence in the midst of your worship what are you talking about preacher because in chapter 15, verse 7, 8, 9, he says, how will I know? God said, get a three-year-old she-goat. Get a three-year-old heifer. Get a three-year-old ram, excuse me, a turtle dove and a pigeon. Now, stay with me. God was very specific. And now Abram's getting better about following instructions. God said, give me a three-year-old heifer, three-year-old she-goat, three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a pigeon. Now, God gave Abram the liberty to present what I want the way you want to. 
I told you what I want. Now you tell me how you want to present it to me. Come on, somebody stay with me. I told you what I want. Now, how will you present it to me? Can I, can I give a practical application? Now, I know y'all don't do all these, you know, new millennium uh, women, but I'm grateful that I still have somebody that says, what do you want for dinner? Sometimes she said to, I'll just make something. But what do you want for dinner? Uh, I'd like to have this, this, and this. Okay. And she's teaching my daughters, you take your plate to your father. I told you what I want. How will you present it to me? Abram, I told you what I want. How will you present it to me? And this is what Abram did. He took the three-year-old heifer, the, three, the she-goat, the three-year-old ram, and he cut them in half. Read the text. He cut them in half. He put the half on this side and half of them on this side. The scripture goes on to say, but he did not cut the birds. Right. Say with me. He presented God what he asked for. He cut it and he put it here and then he cut it and he put it there. As a result of the way he presented God what he wanted, the text says he had to defend his offering. What you talking about, preacher? He said he had to fight the buzzards. Because they were coming for the carcasses. Yeah. Now, any other time, Abram had done what? He presented a burnt offering. Yeah. But this time, God said, I'm going to show you that I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to show you that you're right in right standing with me. Give me this, 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 and this. God, I give you everything you ask for, and I'm going to present it to you in this fashion. I'm going to present the gifts that I have for you to you in this fashion. And now he finds himself having to, to defend his offering. Have you ever had to defend the call on your life? Have you ever had to defend your worship? Have you ever had to be in a situation where you had to defend yourself? I got to go to church. I need to go to church. I need to go to worship. But somebody in your life, somebody in your circumstance say, why are you always running down there? This is the first time that Abram worshiped and God made his presence manifest. Stick with me. Look at the text. I, 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 you could peruse it as I'll use Bishop's uh, word there. You could peruse it at your leisure. In chapter 15, he presented it. He had to defend it. And then once he defended it, now God made himself manifest. What did he do, preacher? He then brought the fire and the altar in the midst. Yes. No, not Abram. God yes. brought the fire and the altar in the midst of his offering. I want God in the middle of my worship. We need to have the presence of God in the middle of our worship. Well, I don't need him on the side observing it. Make your presence manifest. Now, this is amazing. Abram had been, been consistently worshiping God and consistently presenting it to God because he believed God. And now he said, God, affirm to me that I am in right standing with you. I'm going to affirm my right standing with you by being in your midst. Sometimes we need to have the presence of God in our midst. God has told us what he requires. How, he will, how we present it to him is what he requires. I don't know about you, but I want, no, I don't want, I need the presence of God in the middle of our worship. Right in the middle of our worship. And then the text goes on. No sooner than he did that. Somebody say no sooner. No sooner that he had this magnificent experience with God to confirm what he was going to do, con to confirm that he was in right standing with God, to confirm that God is going to bring all his promises to pass. Right there, no sooner, here comes Syrah. She said, look, we need to go and make sure God's word come to pass. I'm old. But I do got this young girl to work for me. We're going to make God's will happen. We're going to make God's promises happen. Have you ever had somebody trying to make things move instead of waiting on the Lord? No sooner than he had this amazing experience with Jehovah, Sarah, even with her good intentions, 
is trying to get in the middle. Somebody say, guard your anointing. Guard your anointing because even with those folks who have good intentions, they corrupted the circumstance. And instead of the, let me say it this way. God spoke over Abram that there is a great nation in you. Abram had great nation anointing. And because Sarah decided she's going to help God, another nation was created. She took the, uh, the intended anointing for her to be the mother of the great nation God intended. And now another nation has been created. I know this because in the text, when, 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 when Sarah now says, get this woman and her little child, who mocking my child, get her out of here. And he listened to his wife because he had some common sense. And then as they, he, he interceded and said, God, what about the maid servant and the child? He said, because he is your son, I will make of him a great nation. Because God, he, he has to honor his word. He gave a word to Abram that you are the father of a great nation. And then if you look at the text, after that, he is called Abraham. Because God said, you are the father of many nations. Abram was intended to father a nation to God. But because of what he did, now he has a father of nations. Y'all got to look at your word. Wow. Protect your anointing. And because they got in the middle of it, now God requires a new covenant. Even that boy that you weren't supposed to have, you're going to circumcise him too. You're going circum to be circumcised. The child that you're not supposed to have is going to be circumcised. And every male under your tent, every male under your covering is going to be circumcised because there needs to be a new covenant between you and I. Now we move, we fast forward, we're, we're past uh, all the texts. Now, now, because of this blood covenant, Abraham, having had his name changed, having stand in the power of his anointing, having met the presence of the angels who have told him again, you shall be a great nation. And now that he is 99 years old, and now that they caught his wife laughing internally, and she lied, protecting herself. Tell her, I didn't lie. Yes, she did, because we heard you. And, and, and they've gone through all of this, and now they stand on the precipice of, of this situation. They find themselves again moving. And there's still something that has to be purged out of Abraham. Can, can, can somebody be honest? We've been saved a long time. And there's still some stuff. There's still some things that God has got to deal with us on. There's still some things. Because some of us get, we have a hard, we have a hard time with, with that tie. We're like, oh. Woo. Or maybe, maybe you've, been, you've been with the Lord since you were a teenager, and when the pastor asks you for early morning prayer, you'd be like, oh, man, come on. There's some things that have to be worked out in you. Or maybe when, when pastor says, listen, I want everybody to come to, back to the house of God that we may worship together. Like, well, now, listen, listen, yeah. That's, I'm, I'm good with the YouTube. And Amen. But there's some things that need to be worked out in us that God is asking for obedience. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Now, he had this fearful, lying, deceitful spirit rise up again under the same circumstances. Now it's not in Egypt. He's in the land that God promised to him. Abimelech. He said, now listen, he's got a great army. We're going to tell him you're my sister. Now, Lady Tony, help me understand. I, I did the math. I've read the text and I have the context. Sarah was 90. How fine was this 90 year old? How beautiful was this 90 year old that you feared that the king of a nation will look upon her at 90 and still want her 
at 99, why are you still worried about somebody taking your woman? Over these last 20, I'm talking to the brothers now, over these last 25 years that you've been together, have you not shown her time and time again, I am your husband? Have you not shown her time and time again that God is with me? What about this outside force is causing us to question the integrity of God's word? This is, the, this is what you need to understand. If Abram doesn't, Abraham now, doesn't deal with this deceitful, fearful spirit, it's going to become a generational curse. How do you know that, Tassel? Because I've read some more word. Isaac was a deceiver. Jacob was a deceiver. It, it fell from generation to generation because he did not deal with what is in him? I want to know is there somebody here that says it, it stops with me. It's not going to go to my children. It's not going to go to my children's children. God, whatever you need to do, whatever you need to clean up, whatever you need to fix in me, do what you need to do because it stops right here. Abraham needed to stand up and say, God fix me. God get me right because it's going to be a problem to the great nation that you've given to me. Somebody say deliver me. So now we follow this text and we've seen Abraham's maturation. We see where he begins and he showed us that he is a worshiper. He commits to setting aside a portion to God. He presents a new worship to have God in the midst of his worship. Now it's time for Abraham to see what God's design for worship really is. God, I know what you said to me. God, I, I, God, I know what you've done for me. God, I know what you meant to me. I see your promise on my life. And folks are starting to look at me and start to think that something doesn't make sense with my worship. Show me what you're talking about, preacher. Because in the text, he took two young men with them. Now, them young boys, they, they're serving their master. And they're walking. And they're thinking, didn't he say we were going to worship? Now, because of their position, they thought within themselves, where's the lamb? I don't see the sacrifice. Maybe we're going to the store. Maybe we're going to Food Depot to pick up the lamb. The Piggly Wiggly may have a sale on lambs. On the way to where God wants me to be, I'll just pick up a sacrifice. Folks may be looking at you talking about, it don't take all that. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know where God has brought me from. You don't know what the doctor said and then God said no. So don't mind me if I be begin to worship God and it don't make sense to you. It may not make sense to you, but I'm going to worship God for what I know that he's done for me. Now, but can we, can, can we, can we keep walking with the man or woman of God even when it doesn't make sense? On the way to Mount Moriah, can we still be obedient and walk with them? Can we be the man servants who walked alongside? I, I may not be privy to the plan, but I'm walking. I may, I may not know the details, but I'm walking with you. I, I know we're going to a place that you, God has shown you, so I'm going to keep walking with you until he reveals it. Until God reveals what he's doing to you, I'm going to keep walking with you. Can we do that in the household of God? Now, even my blessing is beginning to wonder what's going on. My blessing, what you've blessed me with, what you promised to me, begins to question my worship. Mm -hmm. Father, here I am. I see the wood. I see the fire. Where's the lamb? Y'all read it with me? God will provide for himself a lamb. Now, Mr. Mark... I kept looking at this text because it bothered me. I kept looking at this text because something about this depiction wasn't adding up for me. 
Isaac asks for the lamb, but God provides a ram. That bothered me. Now, maybe y'all don't, but I, I don't know God to be double-toned. Isaac asked for the lamb. God provides a ram. Isaac was accustomed to a young little lamb being a part of his father's worship. Even Abraham said, God will provide a lamb. But if I'm looking for it and asking for it, and I'm used to a lamb offering, why did God provide a ram? I'm accustomed to two songs, a prayer, and an offering. Why didn't God follow the pattern? I'm used to this lamb. I'm used to the deacons leading devotion, reading something, and then we go into the word. Why isn't God doing it his way? Listen, I, when I moved down here to Atlanta and I got an opportunity to go to Hunter Hill where I met the lovely lady, Tony, is where I found out what real Baptists are. Because there was a couple of deacons that led devotion. Uh, I thought they were saying, slow down, chariot. But they were saying, low down. I still, they still don't make uh, phonetic sense. But they, low down your chariot and let me ride. But not just there. Let me, let me, let me ride. Mark, I was in, I was befuddled. What in the world is going on? But it didn't stop there. As they're singing and they're wrapping it up, here come Mother Flanoy off the second pew with her beautiful white hat. And as she begins to stand, Another deacon gets up and put a metal chair in the front. What in God's heaven is going on in here? What are y'all people's doing? We don't do this here stuff in the Kojic. What is Mother Flanoy doing? Is she shaking every one of the deacon's hands? We going to be here forever. Then I heard Mother Flanoy pray. And I believe heaven opened up. And God said, what you want? Because I've never heard an old mother call down heaven like that. And I said, now this I can do. Are y'all with me? I'm used to the lamb, but God gave me a ram. Help me understand that, Brother Pastor. Now, because I'm a student, I looked in the original Hebrew. When the text says, where is the lamb? It was a youngling. It was a small lamb. And that makes sense. Then I went further. Now, God, maybe ram means the same thing. So let me go look it up in the Hebrew. No. Ram in the Hebrew meant a mature male. I asked for a young Little lamb. But he gave me a mature male. Mm. Now, now I'm about, I, I still know my word. I still been, I've been to Sunday school. Uh, I remember Isaiah saying, and I remember the John the Baptist saying, behold, the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. That's what I, I, now, now, I know y'all not, I know God not contradicting himself. He's not because in the Greek. The word that John spoke, behold the lamb, it is the masculine positive, and it meant the mature sheep. Why? Because God is going to show you, if you're willing to give me everything, if you're willing to give me your problems, if you're willing to give me your sacrifice, if you're willing to give me your weakness, if you're willing to give it all to me, I'm going to give you the mature man. What am I talking about? I heard that 3,000 years ago. He began to set things in order. And then he was showing Abraham that the ram that I will provide will be the ram that takes away the sins of the world. He said, give me what all that you have and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the mature ram. Stay with me. So we are used to and accustomed to reading where it says he bound the lad. Yes, yes, yes. But lad in the Hebrew is not a child. 
a lad was a young man who was not yet ready to marry. So Isaac could have been 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. We surely know and understand from the picture that is framed that Isaac could have overpowered his father, who is 125. He's like, hey, pops, uh, I don't see the lamb in the ring. You know what I'm saying? What's up? What's up? And then he said, well, son, you provide a ram. Okay, well, where are you going to provide? Just turn around. Hold up, bro. Hold up. What are you tying me up for? But he was obedient. How many of you can be obedient if God constrains you? I'm called to preach. Sit in the seat. Woo. I got a word. Sit down. If you just let me lay hands, I'll deliver. Sit still. Can we be obedient when we're constrained? Because not only did he constrain him, he laid him on the altar. And just when he was getting ready to give all, he said, stop your hand. Oh, this is what blessed me. Mark, because he said, look over there. There is a ram. Y'all know the text. Here's the thing about a ram. A mature ram has horns. What does a ram use his horns for? For defense and for attacking. Because his neck muscles are strong. His back muscles are strong. How is he going to be caught in a thicket? Wait a minute. A ram got stuck in a bush? Then God reminded me, God could have, Christ could have called down a thousand angels, but he didn't. The ram could have pulled himself loose, but he didn't. Jesus could have stopped all of it from the cross, but he said, I will sacrifice. I will be the sacrifice. I will be the one on the altar so that you don't have to because he made up in his mind. Even with Abraham, I might be strong enough to come out. I might be strong enough to get out, but I'm willing to stay here because God needs to sacrifice me. Are you willing to give God all in worship? Because if you're willing to give him all in your worship, <laughs> his ram is worthy of all. The ram is worthy of all. The ram is the only one strong enough to carry the sins of the world. The ram is the only one strong enough to fight off the adversary. The ram is the only one strong enough to be able to handle the circumstance. The ram, you might want to put a little substitute on the lamb, but that baby lamb can't handle your issues. That baby lamb couldn't handle my issues. That baby lamb couldn't carry our problems. But there was a ram whose back is strong enough, whose will was strong enough, whose mind was made up to be obedient even unto the altar of God. Thank God for the ram. My third and final point. The ram is worthy of our all. If we give God our everything, he'll substitute the ram. God, I got a lion spirit. He is the ram. God, I got issues with folks around me. <laughs> he is the ram. I got an issue with this, that, and the other. Here is the ram. If you'll, if you'll give me your issues, if you'll give me your worship, if you'll give me your portion, I'll give you my ram. 